graphene has a number of uh, unique properties. And um, they, when people talk about limitless potential of graphene, they actually mean that it can be applied in many different areas and it, co it, can, it can solve many different problems. I'm Kostin Olasov. I'm a professor of physics at the National University of Singapore. Uh, I recently moved here from Manchester, and I, I work mainly on 2D materials, graphene, and the new direction of our work here at NUS is smart adaptable materials. So over the last 15 years, my work was mainly on, on graphene. Graphene is quite a unique material. It's the first example of two-dimensional material. It means that it's only one atom thick. It's very, very simple material. It consists of only carbon atoms. And at the same time, it has a huge number of very unique, very interesting properties. It's the strongest material, most stretchable, most conductive, thermally conductive, and so on. And it, it's, it was really a huge excitement and still a huge excitement for uh, all the scientific community to study the properties of, of this material. But at the same time, it became quite obvious early on that it can give uh, a rise to a number of new applications. And that's what exactly what we see right now, uh, new applications which use graphene appearing on the market every every month, basically. So um, we started to work with, with graphene in, in in 2004, when I was a postdoc uh, at, at the lab of, of Andre Geim. Andre Geim was my teacher for a number of years, we are, and we are really good, good friends and good collaborators now. And I really learned a lot from, from, from Andre how to do science, because it's really a different thing when uh, to do physics and to do science. There are no recipes how to, how to, how, how to do science, but uh, and it's not, not easy at all to produce something new out of, out of nothing. And uh, graphene was actually a very good example of, uh, of, of, such a, of such a thing which came out of very simple thing which, which we call Friday evening experiments. It's the, uh, it's the style of work which Andre Geim established in our lab when we try to, to work on some side projects, not, not the mainstream work which we, which we usually do. And such working on side, on side projects when you are a layman, when you're really a newcomer, allow you to ask many stupid questions and one of those led to, to, to isolation of graphene. I think there are a number of very exciting applications with, with, with graphene. One example would be the applications in membrane technology because graphene is a perfect membrane. It's very thin. At the same time, we can control permeation of different species through this for water treatment, for ion separation. I'm sure that there will be huge applications in biotechnology and uh, and 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 health, and uh, uh, from from there we go to electronics, optoelectronics, which are being developed right now. So one can get excitement about many things with with graphene. Uh, for a long time, graphene was the laboratory material. We've been working with this and we were very excited with its properties, but it wasn't clear whether we can use it for for applications. Uh, still, quite early on, people were trying to work on mass production of, of graphene. And today, there are many different methods exist how to produce graphene on large scale, tons if you need it for, uh, for energy applications or, or composite applications and huge square kilometers if you want it for electronic applications. And there is no one single way, the best way how to produce graphene because different types of applications require different types of graphene as well and we require graphene in, in different forms like energy applications like batteries, supercapacitors, they would require 
graphene slurry or, or, or graphene powder to, to be mixed into electrodes and applications as touch panel, you need exactly a model layer of graphene being just you know, on uh, on plastic or some or on or on glass. So uh, when the, when we only started our project on graphene, we were trying to make transistors out of graphite. And if you would ask me at that moment of time, would you ever ever be able to get to one layer of, of graphite? I would say definitely not. Then we isolated it using scotch tape methods, which gave us small flakes, few microns, which were enough for our experiments to produce small transistors. But if you would ask me, would uh, this material ever be commercialized? I would say definitely not. So these days we have many, many different methods how to produce graphene. And many of those methods actually are quite mature, so we can produce tons and we can produce square kilometers of, of this of this material. Still, uh, application of this material for any specific technology would require adaptation of the of the production methods, and that might take anything from months for uh, from a very simple technology to maybe years if we are talking about uh, CMOS technology. The production methods which we have, they allow uh, the use of graphene in, in many different areas. We already start to, to see graphene being used in, in, in a variety of different products. Uh, Huawei uses graphene for, uh, for its top models. Uh, there are graphene parts uh, in Ford cars. So it's actually it's not very visible, but it's quite, it's quite likely that you touch graphene somewhere almost almost every day. Of course, uh, when we started to work with graphene, we were dreaming that everything around will be made of graphene, and and people were speculating that you would you would um, wake up one one morning and everything is uh, is graphene based. Of course. That's uh, clearly what we see now, is that it's not going to happen, but we will see a gradual transition towards graphene being used more and more. So I would say that uh, already now graphene is, is a commodity, so, and it's a, it's a matter of time before it's being used, uh, it's being used even more. The level of, uh, of its use it's very difficult to predict. It's like silicon. How do you touch silicon every day? Probably not. It's somewhere deep in your in, in your computer, but lots of things depend on this. So it will be probably a similar situation with graphene. It will be used. It will be used in some uh, crucial applications. How broad and whether you would see it every day in front of your eyes? Very difficult to to predict. Graphene has. A number of uh, unique properties, and um, they, when people talk about limitless potential of graphene, they actually mean that it can be applied in many different areas, and it, co it can it can solve many different problems. Of course, there is this word "can," so being able, but whether it will be, it's not it's not clear because. Applications in technology depend not only on the basic material properties, it also depends on the economy, on how we can uh, match it uh, good or bad with the, with the previous technology and so on. So uh, it, it's not always good to be disruptive of technology. It actually slows its, uh, its, its, its application in the, in the real technology. So I think Graphene has a really nice set of unique properties. Which one we are going to use out of this out of, out of the set is very difficult to predict. We already use quite a few in the existing applications. I'm sure that this list will 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 grow. And my biggest excitement is actually not in uh, graphene 
solving some existing uh, problems in existing uh, technologies. My really hope, my real hope is that Graphene will create new technologies which will make old technologies with its old problems obsolete altogether. Mm-hmm.